Uh, Josh Bower, our teamer mid-range player, also someone who could sneak in. Yep. A lot of cool decks at the top of the standings. There's been some oddballs here. Mono Green Beatdown, Mono Blue Devotion, Teamer Aggro, all potentially in the top eight. What I like about this is as much as there are lots of different decks in the meta, we get to see we saw Obs on Aggro versus Esper Dragons last round. We're gonna get to see the other part of the big three here, Atarka Red versus Obs on Aggro as we get to the match. Kian Dai on the play. He'll start with Lanoir Waste. That's a decent sign for Cedric when he's leading off on a pain land. Cedric will have the turn one at Monastery Switch here, knocking Kian down to 19 as we go back over to our Ops on Aggro player. His turn two is cracking Winds Up Teeth and making some sort of two drop. And this matchup is an interesting one. Tell me your thoughts on it. Uh, it comes down to, in my opinion, Kian's mana. If he's able to cast his spells on time and take minimal damage, he's just doing a lot more pound for pound than what Cedric's doing. And he's backing it up with some key removal spells. But if he stumbles, too many lands that come into play tapped, too much damage off of his lands, even if his cards are more powerful, Cedric can steal the games. Well, he did half of what you mentioned there. He's playing his cards on time. That's a turn two Fleece main line. He is taking some damage off it, though, having tap land or wastes. We'll see what Cedric's response is. Ideally, he would lightning strike and keep beating down, but this 3-3 can be difficult for a red deck to get through, especially when it's on the play. Now, a, a game plan Cedric can have if he doesn't kill this is by going wide with things like Hordling Outburst with cards like Dragon Fodder, especially backed up by Atarka's command, he can work around these big threats. But ideally, he would just be removing them from the table. Mana Confluence is a play from Cedric. If he had an Atarka's command, he could make an attack here. He'd have to spend his whole turn doing it, but it would at least let him get the Lion off the board. We'll see where he goes. Monster Shift Spear is so powerful in this deck. And all the points just add up when you're dealing with something like a target command. This is not a good sign for Keen if Cedric was contemplating this play before doing the obvious lightning strike. It meant that he had probably things like Dragon Fodder, potentially a target command, and other workarounds. So Lightning Strike takes care of the Fleece Main Lion. Keen now at 15 off the hit. He has dealt himself two damage with his own mana and taken three off the Swift Spear. And Keen's turn uh, is looking like it may be something like Thought sees you, play a tap land, say go face up Den Protector, those are the kind of turns that Kian can't handle. He's got to be very smooth in the first couple turns of the game. And Thoughtseize, interestingly enough, even though you're playing against a red deck, it is worth casting here. Now it's an extra point of damage. You talk about the fact, you know, this was a three dip point damage life swing from Thoughtseize, not two. So you see King going to 12 to Thoughtseize, and he should be glad he did, but Cedric's hand is, is real strong. Yeah, there's a lot of redundancy here. I, I almost feel like Kian's got to take Dragon Fodder here and just hope that Center does not draw land number three for the Hordling Outburst. But this is a very powerful, very redundant hand here from Cedric. It's going to be a tough game for Keen to win. Yeah, with another land, Cedric has plays like Monastery Swift Spear plus Atarka's Command. Some really powerful things. You see second Swift Spear, Lightning Berserker, Atarka's Command, Dragon Fodder, Hordling Outburst. He's going to take the command out of the hand. That's, so that's fine, too. I mean, it, it's the same sort of long-term implications of that card. Just too much for Keen to overcome here. Yeah, then play a Temple. I mean, with the Tarkus command out of the hand, it's possible that something like Siege Rhino may be able to stabilize this game for Kian. Still going to be tough. And back over to Cedric. Does not look like he hit the third land, so has some decisions. Swift Spear, Lightning Berserker, Dragon Fodder, Hordling Outburst. Those are the ones we know about. Going wide, like we talked about doing, cutting lots of these little creatures on the board, is powerful. Uh, Definitely game one against Dobbs on aggro is riskier post board. And you can see Kian's leftovers there. He has cards like Den Protector, Heroes Downfall. These are all powerful magic cards, but if Cedric's just cranking out a ton of 1-1 tokens, they aren't that well equipped to stabilize this game. All right, well, Cedric is going to go make those two tokens off Dragon Fodder. That prowess is the, mon the Swift Spear into a 2-3. He'll go ahead and attack. The attack puts Kian down to 10 and then pass back the turn. Limited by his mana. So go back over to Kian. Den Protector, Fleece Main Lion, Obs on Charm among his options. With the, with the points he's taking and just uh, the inability to get to two spells a turn or lock Cedric out, it's just going to be hard for these little chip shots to not eventually overwhelm Kian. He and needs to find something like Siege Rhino. He just has to gain life and get a really stable blocker out there. Yeah, remember Obs on Aggro, not a course of Krufix deck, so it puts a lot of pressure on Siege Rhino to, stay, to hold down the fort. Play was Fleece Main Lion, no fourth land. We go back over to Cedric. Looks like Cedric also no with, with no land drop. As far as Kian knows, there's no kill spell in Cedric's hand. Cedric will be throwing creatures into the Fleece Main Lion. That said, he may be just fine doing that. And it's going to be Monastery Swift Spear and another Swift Spear that he's drawn. And he either swings everything or nothing, and the answer is everything. Here yep. comes five creatures. 
Lion eats a Swift Spear, but he takes four. Kian is down to six. There's the Rhino. No land yet. In step one, I don't know if Kian's going to be able to get to step two, though. It's going to be hard. And even still, it may not be enough. I mean, there's a big discrepancy in the lead tolls right now, and uh, Cedric is showing the ability to go wide against individual blockers. Looks like he's going to go for a face down Den Protector. That does mean he does not take damage off his own land or wastes. That much, that's a plus. He'll pass back, hoping for an untapped land next turn. And Cedric hits Mountain. It's a big card for that Horling Outburst we know about. Yeah, Outburst prowessing both the Swift Spears here is pretty strong. Though Cedric, to keep pushing damage, is suiciding a lot of his creatures into the board. Not a big deal, though. I mean, Kian's at six. He's not really threatening the ability on the way back to do very much. You look right now, his graveyard has, you know, a blocker and a thought seize. He definitely can't get back. So the Den Protector doesn't really matter very much. Remaining cards for Cedric. He has a Lightning Berserker. He has a Hordling Outburst. He's going to go with the Outburst. He's going to prowess the guys, make three goblins. Once again, it's either swing everything or swing nothing. I think this is another everything attack. Sure is. Here come two, three Swift Spears and two Goblins. This will push three damage through, and Cedric will lose two creatures for it. Yeah. If Kian wants to save damage, he can double block the two. He can block a Swift Spear with each of his creatures, but that's a chump block with the token. If he wants to make inroads on the board, you see the block there, which is Fleece Man in front of Swift Spear and Morph in front of Token. That knocks him down to three. He's and... going to need an untapped land, and he hits. It's going to be Mana Confluence, but... He is still alive. This will bring him up to five. Give him a third large blocker. It means he's not dead on the board. Well, with the ex yeah, not dead on the board as of yet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is, this is untap land number four. It's just, this is where it's got to start. Here's Siege Rhino. Kian down to two to cast it, but goes up to five. Cedric down to 13. And Cedric with a bunch of huge draws. I don't know how much Cedric respects the possibility of Bio Blight. I feel like his best line of play is probably holding out Burst and say, go, try to set up a kill for next turn. Yeah, once, once the, he's been, he's been on that play where it's either swinging everything or swinging nothing. He was swinging everything to force Kian to hit some draws. Kian did hit them. So now he may want to just set up for one big turn. Remember, he still has Lightning Berserker in his hand as well. So he has the ability to have at least one haze threat next turn in the event that he tries to go for the kill. Can he get five more creatures than Kian has blockers? Hordling Outburst would do it. Looks like Hordling Outburst and Dragon Fodder both in the hand. And unless he's doing something with Lightning Berserker this turn, it does not make a lot of sense to cast Dragon Fodder plus Berserker. And I don't think there's much to be gained by dashing. So I think in Cedric's position, I, I would be inclined to just cast Hordling Outburst and say go. Cedric, mathing it out, but I, I think you're, you're right. He's going to come to the same situation. He can have three creatures one of two ways, either Fodder plus Berserker or Outburst. Leaving the haste threat in his hand for next turn does seem stronger. I mean, as Cedric's looking at tendering an Alpha Strike here, it knocks Kian down to three. So unless Lightning Strike is involved in all this, I don't think there's a lot to be gained here. He, he risks taking a bunch of damage on the way back, and I don't think he's really cutting off any outs. If you're knocking Kian down to one and maybe cutting off Mana Confluence, that would be a different story, but I don't think Cedric has access to that kind of attack. Thinking right now, if he swings the team, he only pushes two damage. does open him out in the form of some burn spells. The, the major incentive to attack with everything is if you are worried specifically about Bio Blight and feel like you just need to burn Kian out. I think he's going for the dash Lightning Berserker plus swing the team line. That's certainly the most aggressive option okay. available to him. So the Berserker, the Swift Spear, and a Goblin Token should all get eaten here. 
Yeah, I would imagine this is Siege Rhino in front of Berserker, Fleece Mane Lion in front of Swiss Spear, Morph in front of Token. It does mean that Cedric will deal three, put Kian down to two, then play Dragon Fodder and have five creatures ready to untap against Kian's three blockers. It forces Kian to have another creature. Yeah, this is a bit of a hedge against Bio Blight. It means that even if Kian does have it, I don't believe it's in his main deck, but it, he could possibly have it here. And at least a burn spell wins the game. Exactly. Now, to be fair, Bio Blight, yeah, would do a number on this board. He's the Dragon Fodder's post combat. And even now, what I do okay, I was, what I do like about Cedric's line is it's opened him up to a lot of outs for burn spells being lethal. And in the situation where he doesn't draw the burn spell, he can still outburst next turn, and then on the following turn, almost certainly has a lethal attack. Yeah. There is some concern about Kian turning the corner. Not much, but some. Yeah, I think Cedric's play is slightly more vulnerable to something like another copy of Siege Rhino, potentially. Exactly, because then he could use the Siege Rhino and then the following turn, flip up Den Protector, which can't be blocked, swing it and some Siege Rhinos, and force Cedric into some pretty poor blocks. Yeah. Death Dealer, Obzon Charm, Hero's Downfall, those are the cards in Kian's hand. None of them really good against Goblin Tokens. He's going to need another blocker on the board. He does have a Den Protector in hand and a line in the graveyard, but he can't make that play because he'll have to pay life off Mana Confluence if he does. And Cedric gets to have a lot of patience here on the back end, too. Uh, you know, if, if Kian says go, let's say with all of his blockers and all of his mana available, there's nothing forcing Cedric to make another Alpha Strike. He can simply cast Holding Outburst, pass the turn back, and, and force Kian to have something yet again. So my question is, can Kian actually survive this turn? If you look at his lands, those two on top, the Mana Confluence and Lanor Wastes, both cost him a life point. So he needs another creature in play to, to survive, but how does that happen? Can he cast a creature without taking a damage? Yeah, it basically has to be Siege Rhino. If, he, if he's casting the small stuff here, uh, I don't know if there's a way for him to survive. Yeah, his hand is Death Dealer, Downfall, Obs on Charm. I'm not sure any of these actually make him survive the turn. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm unconvinced that Kian can, can live through this, just Cedric's turning the board sideways. I think Kian coming to the same conclusion. Yeah, he's going to swing the team. And I like the... So this seems to be that he wants to induce Cedric into thinking that if he... If Cedric... If he wants to induce Cedric into blocking. So say Kian's last card's a Siege Rhino. Mm -hmm. if, Cedric's, if Cedric blocks, he's not dead to Siege Rhino. But if he doesn't block, he is. The swing is for nine. So maybe Cedric will have to chump away a token. But then the question is, on the other side, is Cedric even able to beat Siege Rhino? I think the answer is probably yes, because Keen would only have one blocker back, and in a worst case scenario, Cedric's drawing very live. I think just chumming the Fleece Main Lion is probably what I would do from Cedric's spot. He certainly is the safe play. You still have a chance of being Siege Rhino if that's Keen's follow-up. And if Keen's got just a removal spell or, or something, you're going to win the game on the crackback. The issue here is that if Cedric says no blocks, Kian's dead. And if Cedric blocks, Kian's still dead. Yeah, I, I think that Kian needs to hope for Cedric to block, chump block multiple creatures. Yeah, I, I, I like this block from Cedric. I, I think this protects him from the worst case scenario and still gives him out. You know, it's still lethal on the way back. And if Kian has he's Rhino, he's still drawing very live. Yeah, so he'll chump block the non trampling threat. He'll Block the stuff, Fleece Main Lion, so now six damage coming across. Looks to put Cedric at six. That's what will happen. Goblin Token dies. And he'll pass. It's going to make Cedric turn it all sideways, which I imagine Cedric will do. And those Pain Lands, he talked about how what, he needed early threats and needed his mana to not hurt him too much. If you look at the end there, the line of flipping up Den Protector, playing Fleece Main Line, would have stabilized Kian were it not for the fact that his lands dealt him so much damage. Yeah, and that's, that's you know, the, the issue with Obson Aggro in this matchup is you're taking little points of damage from your lands along the way. Sometimes you're not casting spells on time. Uh, Kian had both of those things that Lenore wasted on a couple points. He took an entire turn on ha off having to cast Thoughtseize because one of his lands came into play tapped, and that was the difference. Cedric barely got across the finish line that game. Kian made some powerful plays, but his lands kind of undid him. All right, well, Cedric up one game to zero here in what figured to be a really close game one. And we'll get back to the sideboarding 
in a second here. One thing that we are starting on SSU Live, this is the next level library. You've been seeing the things released by Patrick Chapin over the years here. Now compiled in the entire library. This is for all skill levels. It is Next Level Magic, the book, as long as along with Next Level Deck Building. So this is your new one-stop shop for all the publications. Both of them available both as PDF ebook or in paperback. Paperbacks now available in full soft cover printings. You can get them now at StarCityGames.com slash next level. Yeah, next level magic, a uh, focus on gameplay, next level deck building, a uh, focus on deck building uh, by Magic's preeminent theorist, Pro Tour Hall of Famer, two time world's runner up, Pro Tour champion Patrick Chapin, available both on paperback and ebook. Very excited to finally have these books available on both platforms. StarCityGames.com slash next level to order your copies today. All right, so let's go some sideboards. A shark of red, a deck that usually that struggles some after sideboard, or usually his matchups get worse. Mm -hmm. It's got a great game one. That one's pretty close already. So Cedric's sideboard, what are we looking for? Four copies of Eidolon of the Great Rebel, four copies of Roast, two copies of Hall of Triumph, two copies of Goblin Rebel Master, a Destructive Revelry, a Scour of Sands, and a Goblin Heel Cutter. Really like Cedric's sideboard here. On the draw, I'm not sure if he wants Eidolon because Keegan's deck is definitely capable of threatening damage, but definitely on the play, Eidolon's going to be great. Four copies of Roast is a huge upgrade for Cedric. It allows him to kill Siege Rhino and some of the other problematic ground pounders. I think the one copy of Goblin Heel Cutter can come in here as well. Kian, definitely the defensive deck, trying to block in the lost spots, and Heel Cutter is a nice way to top off the curve. Yeah. Over on Kian Dai's sideboard, he has three copies of Drown and Sorrow, and that's a big one in this matchup. He did show up play a lot of that copy of that that should definitely help him uh, outside of that he has duress that's decent here um certainly an improvement on thought sees duress is, is pretty good in the matchup but a lot of his things are higher up on the curve um nissa whisperwood elemental self-inflicted wound i imagine he may go to a couple copies of ultimate price as well simply because it's a cheaper kill spell i, I wouldn't mess around with cards like duress because cedric very quickly gets to a spot where he's playing off the top and as you saw in there that game because of the awkwardness of his lands and the mana distribution Sometimes those discard spells represent a full turn. I definitely like Drown in Sorrow a ton. I think the two copies of Ultimate Price are excellent in this matchup, and I think the copy of Tassiker can also come in. Post board, Cedric's going to be able to kill more stuff. Cards are going to get into his graveyard, and a, a one mana four five can do a, a lot of work on defense. Yeah, it's not so much for the ability, but more just because it's in a in a way it's a cheap creature. Exactly. Uh, you know. He needs to get to a spot where he can cast two spells in one turn. That's the way for him to recoup the early tempo losses he's going to have by Cedric's deck being faster and more streamlined. Uh, Drown and Sorrow is the other path that Kian has to get to that spot of just wiping Cedric's board. But failing that, Tassiker can get to a spot where tur around turn four, turn five, maybe he's casting multiple spells in the same turn, and he needs those kind of sequences to stabilize the game. Kian will get to be on the play for this game, which will be helpful. So the wants a combination of early pressure and and lands that don't repeatedly hurt him. That He did take just a little too much damage off his lands that came. He took one for Fleece Main Lion, another one for a Thought Seize, uh, took another one for the Siege Rhino, and then at the end couldn't afford to take a fourth point, and yeah. that's what cost it for him. And his lands were fairly cooperative on the balance. He was able to cast things uh, more or less on time, but uh, even still, it was too much. A lot of War Waste, Mana Confluence, a land that came into play tapped in an inopportune time. Uh, and Kian lost a very very close game. Yeah, cards like Sandstep Citadel, even though tap lands can be a liability against a red deck, oftentimes are are worth the tempo loss here. Definitely at turn one, Sandstep Citadel is one of the most important plays for Kian in the matchup because it, it, he can cast most of his spells on time uh, from a color mana perspective and take way less damage over the course of the game. Remember, this one, is a lot of players still alive for top eight going into this round. This one, though, Pretty simple. If you want to get in top eight, you're going to have to win this. Cedric capping off what could be an eight round rally to get into the top eight here. He is one game away. From all the way down, was on the ropes, potentially at risk of being left on the leaderboard at 4-4 at four, four drop throughout the duration of the event. And here he is on the verge of top eighting. Cedric Phillips, I do not believe, has an open series top eight to his name. Uh, he had one Star City Games Seattle Open a couple years ago with uh, red green, just red green mon. It was I don't think it was monsters at the time, and maybe it wasn't mon called monsters yet. But he has one. Okay. He's mentioned to me before that he had zero, so I didn't know if that was actually the case or not. Well, you don't get. He doesn't get a chance to play very many of them. It's true. This is no indictment. Uh, Cedric has not played in many of these events. Going to be a six on six at the very least for game two. Both players on the mulligan, you see here. Yeah. 
This is his. This is. So, Shaq, this is his third top eight. He does have one with John Agro in Seattle a couple years ago. And actually, this, is, this, is, this one's a good one. If you go all the way back to 2009, <laughs> he's got a legacy top eight with a uh, Goblin Charbelcher. Yeah, a, uh, a different time for the Open Series. I played in one of the old legacy events in Los Angeles way back in the day, I think 2010, 2009. And it was definitely a different event. The Open Series has grown <laughs> quite a bit in a number of respects over the last couple of years. Yeah, Charlie, every once in a while you get a Char Belcher but deck into a I'm top sorry, eight. I'm sorry for denigrating his accomplishments. I, I remember a conversation recently where he told me that he did not have any, but it turns out that he's potentially playing for his third Open Series top eight. One sort of recently and one in prehistoric times relative to the Open Series. I didn't realize, I realize he played, I knew he played gob one kind of goblins in Legacy. I didn't really see he went with that kind of goblins in Legacy. There was, a, there was a time where Cedric was just trying to feel something, more or less, and was really on a Char Belcher kick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the turn one sand steps, at least that was so important, is going to be the play from Kian. As a turn two fleece main line on the play, just like game one, this time it cost him no life points as it stares across at Cedric's Foundry Street Denizen. Pain free and on time. Remember, both players on six. Cedric's turn two is a Lightning Berserker. No second land passes the turn. This is the kind of game that Kian wanted to be playing. It's also the kind of game where Cedric may not be able to be Drowned in Sorrow if it shows up. Kian's play on turn three is another Fleece Main Lion, an Urborg, and a pass. Does Cedric get a second land? He does. He gets to keep playing. Second Mountain. Fleece Main's really important to Nobs on Aggro. Probably it and Siege Rhino are the important some of the most important cards in the matchup. Post-board, Drown and Sorrow joins them. The good blockers. How does Cedric get through these? They are quite large. Berserker can trade with one, but it costs him his whole turn. But with both players bulgating and being light on resources, not necessarily the end of the world. He's going to swing both of them and, oh no, he's gonna, rather he's going to convoke Stoke the Flames at one of them. I was going to say, that's a very aggressive attack. <laughs> I was very surprised, like, what does he have? No, no, okay, no, no, it's Stoke the Flames. And it's going to be a morph from Kian as he passes back. You see Kian being so conservative here, not swinging any of his creatures, even though he had a lot more power on the board than Cedric. He's got a huge advantage in the long term. So uh, even if these Fleeceman lines just get killed and he doesn't get an opportunity to attack or block, just slow the game down as much as possible. Well, I really do like it, especially when he has a hand that's heavy on den protectors, just slowing up, trading, getting two for ones. Seems exactly where he wants to be. Defense, defense, defense. Just block and uh, let his... Uh, card quality eventually overtake the game. Now, he is somewhat hamstrung on his mana. If he wants to go ahead and flip Den, flip Den Protector and get back Fleece Main Lands, he only has one source of green. Cedric's turn turn play, though, is the same as the last one. It's another Stoke the Flames, this time taking down Den Protector. And he is risking Fleece Main Lion possibly going monstrous this turn, but simply can't allow Den Protector to fa flip face up and get back a Fleece Main Lion. And Kian, two spells. It's another Den Protector and a Warden of the First Street, but still no attacks on Kian's side. Defense, as you mentioned, all the way. And Warden, a, a decent threat here, does can get lifelink. I mean, Cedric doesn't want to have happen. Now he will get to go develop his board. It's Hordling Outburst pumping Founder Street Dennis into a 4-1, and in it will swing. Could trade with any of Kian's creatures if Kian wants it. You know, Kian can just offer up the Warden here if he wants to. Oh, yeah. he's, looks like he's got big plans. Yeah, he's going to offer up Fleece Main Line. I was a little surprised. I thought I was expecting to see the Warden take that one. But without the fifth land, Fleece Main is something. I mean, he can get it back later on with them Protector. Warden's going to become a 3-3. Three, three. And he's giving Cedric a lot of time, just hoping to control and overpower. Yep. I mean, he's got two blockers in play, Warden and the Stem Protector, that are capable of containing the tokens. Very interested to see just how slow he wants to go, if he feels he has to get back Fleece Me Lion, or if he's going to go the route of Den Protector getting back Den Protector. I think that he's got a good sync with his mana here in Warden, that I would just go for some immediate payoff here with the Fleece Main Lion. It is really slow getting back Den Protector. Yeah, I mean, he has played the game as defensively as possible. That is the, if he really wants to go for the late game, it, it's an option. But he doesn't need to, he doesn't yeah. need to a million for one Cedric <laughs> to generate enough card advantage to win the game. He can, uh, a couple two for ones here are going to be enough. All right, well, let's see where Cedric's at. I know what I do like Cedric this entire time, not playing around any copies of Drown and Sorrow. He'll make Goblin Rabble Master. 
post-combat Rabble Master and Seiko did not want his Hordling Upper Sokens to suit aside themselves just yet. On Kina's turn, on end step, Fleet Death and Protector flips over, gets back the Fleece Main Lion. Now he'll take his turn, and it's going to be a copy of Duress for Cedric. And it takes the Atarka's Command out of his hand. And that's a, a pretty huge one for him. Cedric was setting up, a, if not necessarily a lethal turn, one where he could have attacked for a bunch and made some huge inroads with that Atarka's Command. Now, uh, way harder to do, especially because all of his Goblin Tokens are going to be compelled to attack into this board. Yeah, last turn he was fine with them attacking. I, I, He's probably less fine with it now. Yeah. We're in the first tree at 3-3. Has not had a chance to use its second ability, so it does not have lifelink just yet. But on Cedric's side, his goblins are all about to make a really ill-advised attack. Very timely duress there from Kian. And I do, what I do like about that play is he played it just at the time when Atarka's command would really get him. I think the duress may have been off the top, but the timing could not have been better. Well, Sutter's damage is a different one. Here's Goblin Heal Cutter. It's going to have to attack because of Rabble Master. Well, that's what's there to do. <laughs> <laughs> Here's going to command. Rabble Master's joining in too. So no blocks on, looks like on Warden of the First Tree. I think that Cedric says that Dem Protector can't block because he wants Keen to have to make the decision of block with a quality creature to trade with Heal Cutter or Rabble Master yep. or allow you to block the tokens. But Dem Protector getting to trade with one of the quality threats is not very good for Cedric. So he says, your crappy creature can't block. Now decide what you want to do. Do you want to contain one of my good threats or one of my bad threats? And it looks like Keen's going to trade the board away for the Rabble Master and the Heal Cutter. Takes five, goes to 15. He's still left with Dem Protector. But the board looking reasonable for Cedric after that turn. Uh, this is, I mean, this is good stuff for Cedric for sure. Here's Rakshasa, Death Dealer with <laughs> two planes on Rakshasa Death Dealer. That's how you build a mana base right there. <laughs> That's how you do it. Fortunately, one of them can tap for black, thanks to Urborg. Still trying to play defense. You do see at, in his hand, I believe Kian had with a copy of Whisperwood Elemental. That's something he could certainly stabilize the board with. Gonna be tough to cast though. I mean, he's on only one green source of mana and four lands. And there's not a lot in his deck that produces Green mana, the turn it comes into play, a lot of his lanes come to play tap. So, uh, Kian has gone on to some more of his some more of his expensive cards here. He's trying to establish a Dem Protector loop, but uh, all these slow cards, though powerful, uh, are giving Cedric an opportunity to still get into a couple points of damage here, a couple points of damage there. Cedric's still pretty far away from being able to kill Kian, but uh, given how poorly the first couple turns of this game have gone, Cedric's still playing. It feels like he's still going to be in a position to at least top deck a Tarka's command and potentially get a kill that way. Cedric does have a decent board here. Kian is still at a healthy 15, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes for the line. He has two mountains, mana confluence, and right now five creatures in play. They're all 1-1s. One Berserker can pump. Kian doesn't have that stabilizing card yet. However, Cedric has to assume that one's waiting in the wings. So he's going to swing Lightning Berserker, offer it as a trade for whichever creature Keen chooses. Keen accepts, he'll trade it for Den Protector. Now post-combat, Cedric looks like he's going to play another Lightning Berserker. And a Monastery Swift Spear. He passed back. Still just trying to go wide against Keen's blockers. Sounds great. Still not playing around Drown and Sorrow. And for Keen, finally does it land five, and it's green. It's going to be a Windswept Teeth, puts him down to 14. But this looks like it'll be a Whisperwood Elemental Yeah, on that is side. perfect for Keen. And uh, now it's going to get harder and harder for Cedric to win the game by going wide, because Keen's going to be able to keep up with that with Whisperwood Elemental. Five, that will be the 4-4. The four, four. He'll manifest and pass the turn. Because of the how defensively he played this game, now that he's finally gotten up to five mana, Keen had a very healthy 14 life. A timely duress stopped him from Cedric from ever getting that big turn. Can Cedric find a way to push damage through? Feels like he's got about a one turn window here to find Roast, and then maybe still be able to play on, maybe stoke the flames. He's used a lot of those, but. He's got to just kill the Whisperwood. He, he won't be able to win in the long term against this card, even with the Tarkus Command. It's going to be very hard to do so. One spot left in the very last event of the day, the Commander Pod. And? One spot left in the last Commander Pod. Yeah, surveying options here. Remember Cedric up a game. This is a match for what we assume is top eight. Definitely Cedric. for Cedric, possibly for Keaton. And 
And Cedric just trying to figure out if there's some way that he can still keep attacking here. I yeah. suppose Hall of Triumph, if Cedric's plus sideboarded that in, would be a pretty big play here. Absolutely. Not a matchup where I would have automatically assume he has. You talked about that one before. It's... I agree. I, I think it's not likely that's brought in, but this would be a very good spot for it. Lightning Berserker is going to attack. That's offering a trade of Berserker for the Manifest token. Keen will accept. No pump. It was a Soren. And Cedric Foundry Street Den is in the post-combat play. Going to have to trade off resources to buy himself an extra shot at finding something like Roast. Yeah. Not where Cedric wants to be. It, the window to draw this and have it still be relevant, uh, very, very tiny. And now a second Whisper Wood is going to be even harder. And he's played, yeah, second Whisper Wood from Keen. So now a pass and a double manifest. And I don't know if Cedric has a way to even sculpt a hand that gets past this anymore. Yeah, he is he's pretty close to locked out. I think Cedric's asking for time, uh, knowing that he's south of 1% to win this game and does he need to preserve the clock here and just go to game three or keep trying to battle this game out. He'll play fetch land, tap it off, Key and Zerborg, play Goblin Rabble Master, pass the turn for Kian. Here's a Siege Rhino. That'll gain three. He goes up to 17. I think Cedric was getting prepared to concede to Sora in there, but Siege Rhino, again, I guess he'll play on for a little bit longer. And Kian, yeah. And one thing that I like, Kian has played all his creatures as though they had Defender, uh, not wanting to attack until he's just an overwhelming favorite. Yeah. He may muster and attack next turn with the Siege Rhino. Uh, maybe the Death Dealer, because he now has double green and double black, but he's in no rush. The way to... Cedric's outs are cards like a Tarka's Command. If he has as many creatures as Cedric, that's just not going to beat him. Yep. Go over to Cedric's turn. He set up for this. His creatures are going to all have to attack because of Rabble Master. So he's going to need a great draw. And here's the Goblin off Rabble Master. Everybody swings in. Well, the Goblins have to. And Kian's going to block everything. Yeah, this is going to be... All Cedric creatures getting blocked, and saying Cedric, do you, you know, do you have anything? Maybe he does have something. Uh, I don't think it's likely to be worth very much. Trade with the first, with one of the manifests. All the goblins off the table. Cedric will pass. Looks like Ted. He has enough time that he makes wants to make Kian play it out. Siege Rhino will swing in along with some num pair of the two twos. That'll be eight. Cedric just wants to see how Kian wants to make this attack. Remember last game, Kian made a pretty weird attack there in the last turn. There's some information to be gleaned in these sort of spots to see how aggressive or defensive you anticipate your opponent play in the game in general. So uh, Cedric at least wants to see what the attack looks like. Fantastiker from Kian. Cedric down to sixth. Next turn should be lethal as Kian manifests two more cards. Cedric <laughs> counting, making Just confirming. Sure this, yep. Okay. You okay, see all these face-down cards. Some land, some land, some land, a Drown and Sorrow, and a land. Well, he gets to know that Kian plays Drown and Sorrows. Yep. He assumed he would, but now knows. Taking all the information he can get as the players will get ready for game three. No big surprises there. Most of these obs on aggro decks do have Drown and Sorrow on the sideboard, but always good double check. Worth noting that Kian left in copies of Dramoka's command. Sometimes a card... Uh, people are a little skeptical about against a deck like a Tarka Red because when you're behind, it's really bad. But enough utility there, and generally cheap enough, but you would want to leave it in. And the players will move over toward game three. Remember, that one, a six on six, both players playing off some mulligans. Kian, I think having really close to what he needs in the matchup. The fact that a turn two, turn three lion on the play and took no damage from his lands to do it turned out to be really strong in the matchup. He was able to block the whole way through, uh, and that's really what his game plan is here. When Cedric can't attack for very much damage, it's only a matter of time before Kian overwhelms him with Siege Rhinos and Whisperwood Elementals. And Kian on the play there, mana base is clean, casting stuff on time, 
Cedric never really got any sort of foothold in the game. Yeah, Autarka Red, just a deck that came onto the scene really during the Pro Tour. Martin Dang, the Pro Tour winner, was playing it. Now, as you know, during each Pro Tour, Star City Games holds states and regional championships. So if you look forward to the next Pro Tour, this is Magic Origins taking place on August 1st. We'll be holding one of our tournaments. This is the Star City Games Regional Championships. So it's the Summer Regionals. Uh, and for the unique selfie play mat you see here, this is parroting the Oscars shot from Ellen DeGeneres. This is going to be given away to the first 200 pre-registered players. So you're going to be wanting to clear out your calendars for that weekend and play in it. When we will tell, this is going to be the reward, and we will be unveiling registration and more later coming on at StarCityGames.com slash regionals. We have two regional championships a year. One is in the winter, one is in the summer. August 1st, we'll have our regional championships all around the United States. As we get closer to the event, you can head over to StarCityGames.com slash regionals. Find the regional championship closest to you and more information about the event. Right, going back to game three now, especially against a deck like Atarka Red, you can see players switch sometimes switch sideboard plans between the play and draw, especially when you're playing against this sort of deck. Um, looking at Kian's deck, as he moves to the draw here, does he need to lower his curve even farther? I become much more skeptical about cards like Whisperwood Elemental, for example. Just five mana plays in general. Uh, they're a little bit harder to rationalize. I, I think that his expensive cards that are powerful are so good that they're worth leaving in uh, pretty much no matter what. Whisperwood is the one that I would be on the fence about. Yeah, his other ones, Soren and Siege Rhino, are pretty great at turning the corner. When he plays all his creatures with Defender, Soren gives him the ability to suddenly play Soren, plus it, and swing everything. I'm also happy with Wingmate Rock, too. It's expensive, but when it comes down and attacks once, it's an enormous swing. And if Cedric is mucking up the board with a bunch of tokens, Wingmate Rock is still powerful, where sometimes Whisperwood it gets jammed up a little bit, and if Cedric has a, a sea of attackers, he can still attack and... Uh, it's harder for Kian to attack on the way back with his Whisperwood and Manifest tokens. Well, so I'm, I'm actually surprised about that. So Wingmate Rock, because so the idea is you get two creatures, but it does force you into attacking for a turn. If he's just going to play everything to sit back and block, Whisperwood can make an... You know, we saw there he eventually kept pace with Cedric's tokens. Uh, you, get a, you get a blocker on the way back because you get the rated token. And sure. then you start gaining life and attacking in the air, which is a lot more powerful than not gaining life and sure. continue to clog up the ground. Yeah, the life the life gain, I suppose, is pretty good off, off Wingmate Rock in the matchup. On Cedric's side, I think the swing card becomes Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Uh, on the draw, I think it's a little dodgy, especially because Kian has Tremoka's command. Uh, Kian's also capable of damage racing in certain games, but on the play, most likely scenario is Kian's playing nothing on turn one. So a draw from Cedric of something like Eidolon of the Great Rebel and an answer for Kian's first play, something like Lightning Strike on your Death Dealer or your Policeman Lion, that's a very potent opening. It's a lot harder for Cedric to execute that on the draw. So that, to me, is the one swing card in the matchup. Well, going to game three, this is going to be the hard one for Kian Dai. He is on the draw and on the mulligan against Cedric Phillips. A Tarka Red has kept a seven-card hand on the play. We saw this game one where Cedric really just ran his opponent, <laughs> ran him out of the game. Well, now he's got to play against three copies of Drown and Sargo. So it's a little bit harder for him to do that, or at least it comes with much greater risk than it does in game one. Actually, no. Game one, that was... He, he was able to do that last round. Game one here where actually was very close. Kian's mana right. ended up catching up to him. For Cedric, though, it could be one of those great draws. Turn one will be a Monastery Swift Spear. Kian down to 19. And Drown and Sorrow, the first draw set there for Kian. Big deal. Plays a Temple, scries to the bottom, and passes. Just how good is Cedric's hand? And how much respect does he want to give to a card like Drown and Sorrow? See here, it's going to be another Monastery Swift Spear. A swing for two puts Kian down to 17. And one of the things I like about Swift Spears is if Cedric has an instant and is willing to leave up mana, he can play around Drown and Sorrow while continuing to attack. Yeah, Wild Slash is great for Cedric in this spot. Yeah. For Kian, on the draw, it's a pair of tap lands. Quite the liability. Now, as we said, he does have that big payoff. And that's, that tension is going to be what's, what this game's about. Yeah. He's going to dash Goblin Heel Cutter, attack for five. That puts Kian down to 12. This is also sort of a way to play around Drown and Sorrow is to get in some damage this turn, but not completely empty out your hand. For Kian, here's land number three. Here's Drown and Sorrow. Both creatures gone. Kian will scry card to the bottom. Board is clean, but Kian's at 12. Hordling Outburst, the play from Cedric. It was the draw, a great one. He'll put three goblins into play. And I believe Cedric has a Tarkas command in hand also, so he's getting close to being able to close this game out, although a huge draw here from Kian and Siege Rhino. It's a huge draw. It does get him three life, but one thing is that Kian knows what the one of those cards in Cedric's hand is, and it's real good here. It's the copy of Goblin Heel Cutter as Cedric, as Kian goes up to 15. 
Stuck on mana. He just has the three lands. Has a lot of powerful spells, but really not the ability to play too many of them at once. Looks like maybe Roast. Maybe another Outburst. I think this is a pretty straightforward play if he's got Roast. I don't think he wants uh, Kian doing something like playing Soren and plussing. I don't think he wants Kian attacking and casting Wingmate Rock. If you can kill the Siege Rhino here, I, I think you've got to take it. A lot of weapons, though. He does have another outburst and an Atarka's command. Cedric would need an awfully specific hand here to be able to want to play through the Siege Rhino, because there's so many risky follow-ups that Kian has on his side. Yeah. We'll see what he goes for. I mean, just resetting the board and dealing three, just then we get to repeat the same decision next turn. Right. And comes the conclusion. Rhino is roasted. Goblins will swing in. Kian is down to 12. Yeah, Cedric, there's too many risky follow-ups here that Kian has. Kian's he's going, just, though. He's just got to kill it. See, Kian getting what he needs. It's another Siege Rhino in his hand. And that's going to be the play. Kian back up to 15, undoes the damage. Cedric down to 11. And the damage race starting to tip the other way. Siege Rhino, real good at doing that. Yeah, those back-to-back -back Siege Rhinos there are just a huge deal for Kian. Now, remember, Cedric can still crack back with the heel cutter, but now... He's losing the race almost. Losing the race, and Kian starting to get to some very dangerous draws for Cedric. Soren gaining a bunch of life, and Wingmate Rock potentially getting raided. Yeah, if he heel cuts in, Cedric would go to 10, Kian would go to 9, and then it would be Kian's turn. That's... Cedric wouldn't develop his board. That is that is a risky spot to be. Now, Cedric still has uh, Tarka's command, which can help against some of the stuff, and makes the race still solidly in his favor, or at least up in the air, uh, if he's able to continue to attack with Heel Cutter and his tokens. But the, these back to back siege runners here, uh, obviously about the worst case scenario for Cedric. Now, at what point, if you're Cedric, do you just want to outburst a second time and then a Tarka's command and say, show me the Drown in Sorrow? I want to do that quite a bit. See, he drew a land for the turn, land four. He has that play available to him. It, I mean, to a Bioblade or a Drown Sorrow, it, it would lose. Yes. I think Cedric's going to be hard-pressed to be Drown Sorrow this game regardless. Might as well go for the biggest payoff then. We'll see if it, see if he wants to do it. If he drew, drew a fifth land next turn, he could make that play with Heal Cutter. It could be a ton of damage. Probably a lethal amount even through something like a Soren, it, it might be able to just 20 him. It's a lot. It is a ton. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It looks like Cedric going to swing the three goblin tokens, willing to give away one of them just for two points. Well, if he has something like a Tarka's command and lightning strike, this could be an effort to get the Siege Rondo off the table. A block. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to Tarka's command to pump his team and three Kian. So Kian goes down to 12. And now we'll go down to eight off the damage, and Lightning Strike will finish off Siege Rhino. I, I love this play from Cedric. It, it, again, the big problems right now are Wingmate Rock and Sword. He cannot allow Kian to untap and attack with something if he can avoid it. This play is also very effective against a follow-up block in the next turn because Cedric still has the Heal Cutter left over. Yep, remaining cards are Heal Cutter and Hordling Outburst for Cedric. He has Kian down to eight. The question is, what is the threat? He's got to hope for the Rhino Parade to stop. Yeah, I think... Kian failed to draw one this turn. Fetches and goes for Whisperwood Elemental. That's a great one against a card like Goblin Heel Cutter. Yeah, Kian in, in the market, big time for two creatures. That two creatures now on par with Cedric's two creatures. And he's going to keep... This is Whisperwood may be able to get him through the game again. It's going to keep making more blockers, stopping Cedric's tokens plan. You see he has Hordling Outburst to go wide, but Kian's going to get cards of his own. I think there may be a question now of a missed trigger. Yeah, okay. gets, man, does manifest it. Cedric, there's the draw of a fifth land. That one, because he doesn't, he used the Tarkus command last turn, that one's not going to help him too much. Last turn, there was a lion. He could have played into a double spell turn here. But now it's either Heel Cutter or Hordling Outburst. Heel Cutter doesn't do much, so it's got to be Outburst. I feel the same way. He can't Heel Cutter and effectively attack. If he hits the Whisper Elemental, the Manifest Token trades, 
and that's a disaster. And if he does it to the manifest token, then Whisper will just get to eat the heel cutter. So nothing to be done with the heel cutter. It's got to be holding outburst. I think Cedric's on the a plan here of hoping to draw Tarkus command and hoping that it's good next turn. Now he's holding on to the land here when he has a heel cutter in hand, which I was a little. I guess he, I guess that doesn't matter if he draws a spell. Yeah, he can play the land next turn. He's got to put the threat of the last card in his hand being action in, into Kian's head. Yeah, he, you're right. There's not a lot to be gained by playing the land, and he needs to get Kian at least thinking that it could be something else. And for Kian, we're back onto his turn. Just going to go back to the all defense plan. Here's a morph. We know it's Dam Protector. That's the one he plays. Here's a manifest. Four creatures into play, and it looks like he has staved off the attack from Atarka uh, Red. I, I, as Cedric rips Atarka's command, I think he's still good. And he does. It's oh Atarka's command. V card he needed. Is it enough? He can dash heal cutter and Atarka's command. Oh, that was a huge draw. Come on, Seti. <laughs> Here's the dash. Heal cutter with five goblins. That's going to swing through. Only three creatures will be able to block. That means three get through, plus the three damage upstairs should be enough. He'll put the, the damage will put Cedric down to four, or Kian down to four, and at least two creatures are going to get through. That's the remaining four damage. This should be lethal. A huge top deck for Cedric. May just put him into the top eight. Yeah, Kian last turn had the opportunity. I, I think he may have had... Oh, he has Dramoka's command in hand, so he's still playing. So the question actually is, does he Dramoka's command before blocks to kill off heal cutter? He needs to stop, stop that from happening. I don't know. I think that he may want to use that card so yeah, before, to prevent the damage. Looks like before attacks, he's going to have Whisperwood Elemental fight heal cutter, and he's attempting to put a counter on one of the manifests. So Atarka's command will do three upstairs and pump the team. Yeah, I think Kian may need to say that Dramoka's command to prevent the damage from the uh, Atarka's command. And if, this is a huge, so if Kian had used the Dramoka's hand to put a counter on Whisperwood, instead of putting it on the manifest, the Whisperwood would still be alive and Kian would survive this. I think this is exactly seven coming across. I think there's two on black two twos and plus three damage. Yeah, no, this is gonna be exactly seven. Yeah, the counter, because, The counter goes there, yes, and because, running... because the heel cutter is a 4-3, it fights and kills Whisperwood, and Cedric's going to win it. Ooh. If the counter goes on Whisperwood, Kean's alive at two there, I, and Cedric's I, out of cards. I think there's I think there's a couple different ways there. I, I think that he can also, if the only out there is Dramoka's command, I think he can, uh, Atarka's command rather, he can also use Atarka's command. Dramoka's prevent command, damage. Just prevent damage. He could have just allowed that attack to come in and waited. Uh, and Cedric there squeezing out exactly lethal game three to complete the full rally. And making He's it back. A top eight. Congratulations to Cedric mm. Phillips and a close call for Key and Die as well. Yeah, I mean, that was a very complicated game. He also had the ability that last turn, instead of playing Den Protector with Dramoka's command up, he could have played Soren, attacked and gained some life, plus one to make combat on the way back. There, there's a couple of different paths there. I think what he wanted to do was have the ability to cast Dramoka's command, and if nothing happened, re then not cast it. Then he could have dead protected back to drown in sorrow and wiped out everything. I think that was the line that Kian took. But uh, given the specifics of the situ situation, really, it's Atarka's a tough command. Line. Yeah. Atarka's command is really the only card he has to worry about. He knows about the heel cutter from previous dashes, and uh, it, Cedric there barely yeah, squeaking that out. I think because if the board's not going to kill you, there's no reason to play it.